Good afternoon. It's August 15th, 2016. My name is Matthew Ogden, and you're joining us for our weekly discussion with the LaRouche Pack Policy Committee. I'm joined in the studio today by Ben Denniston and Diane Sayer. And via video, we're joined by Bill Roberts, who is currently in New York City. Uh, Dave Christie, joining us from Seattle, Washington. Keisha Rogers, joining us from Houston, Texas. Michael Steger, joining us from San Francisco, California and Rachel Brinkley, who's joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. And we are joined today by Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. Now, right before this broadcast, we had a, a brief discussion with both you and Helga, Lynn, and you were both emphasizing the central leadership role in the dominant dynamic being shaped by Vladimir Putin in collaboration with Xi Jinping to create a Eurasian system. This can be seen clearly by the fact that Putin will be the number one honored guest at the upcoming G20 summit in China. And Lynn, you called for the formation of a leadership group from within the United States to uh, cause the United States to work with this new emerging system being shaped by Putin and Xi Jinping. So I wanted to invite you to make some opening remarks uh, and get our discussion going. Well, what we have to do, and when you're looking at uh, China, you're looking at other parts of the Orient and so forth, uh, that you, you have, we have to make uh, just certain kinds of decisions. Decisions which show how exactly the united forces of the, the population of the planet, implicitly, that is at least implicitly, in order to represent humanity as a whole. Don't, we, we can have uh, entertain people in different places. We can uh, discuss things. If we can handle the languages that they're run up, running up against. We'll probably deal with that too. But the point is what we have to do is we have to build a system, a global system implicitly. And what we're doing here at this moment is, is one of those things. It's, it's a global system to lay the basis for a creation of a new system of, of existence of the United States, of what the United States is going to be. And this is our effort. Uh, we, what we're getting in terms of, of Putin and uh, R Russia, is, as, right, and so forth, and, and other leaders in the Orient, this this is all one thing, and we know it really in our hearts and minds. It's only one thing, because you know, like the question of the space program, or the uh, in general, you've got to think as Clark Archer did, and he he did that. And he died. Now his memory is, is very important in this respect and in this moment in a very specific way. But he died and he told Helga, my wife, in the time that he was said, I explained that he was going to die. And he said, the problem is I got two things. I can do what I want, what I did, what I do, and I can die by this, this other thing, which has gripped me. And therefore, this, this memory of him, of Erica, is something which I think we ought to, particularly ourselves, those of us who know the United States and so on, should be rem remember that, that this this is a sacred moment, in effect, in order to build up a, a foundation for man's role in space, for man's role in participating within what space represents, and looking beyond that as well. And that's what we have to do, because you, we have to think. You know, it's like, it's like um, the people, way people deal with other people. They look at them as, and say, well, this guy is so and so. I don't like him too much. I don't like her too much. So forth. This kind of thing. But that's not the issue. It is the issue is what does mankind contribute to the function 
of the species called mankind. And that's what should, we should be dedicated to. And this is a good occasion to do it. I mean, that we're not. This is not the only place that that can be dedication can be delivered, delivered, but it's a very good one to choose. I think that's the moment of this. This moment carries that particular implication. Well, I was struck in the um, Saturday dialogue, which people may have heard. Lynn, you referenced the principle, the work of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, several times in response to a number of questions, including in particular the question of the injustice that has not been addressed since September 11, 2001. And I was reflecting on this because also the previous week when I had brought up the planned performances that our chorus is involved in, uh, sponsored by the Foundation for the Revival of Classical Culture, of Mozart's Requiem, for the 15th anniversary of September 11th, and you brought up the question of Mozart and his, um, I would say, criminally induced early demise uh, and his commitment to a religious, a clearly profound religious belief, which is, you can see in his Requiem, his final piece, and then also Hamilton, who was assassinated by Aaron Burr, a British agent, and Hamilton's commitment in a similar way, perhaps a different domain, but to the question of the future and to the question of how do you create an empirical result of man's creativity? Because in a sense, that's what his method of economics was. It was a me the credit system of the United States is a means to create to create a, a situation where the creativity of the population can be shared with society and then developed. Uh, and I think this is something really important for Americans because we have yet to become a part of this new paradigm and were we to stick to the uh, uh, degraded, despicable candidacies of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as in any way representing the United States or the question of the presidency, mm -hmm. uh, we were sadly mistaken. <laughs> they have nothing to do with that. Uh, and I think it's very important that we raise the thinking of the American people to a standard which is appropriate and therefore the reference to these people and their contributions, particularly Hamilton, as an American, I think is very critical in this period. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the problem is that most people in this day and age and beyond have no understanding of what the meaning of all of this is. They come up with an explanation, which is like having a key. You can put the key in the lock and open the, the, do the, the door, door. But most people are not able to open the door hmm. because they don't know what the door is. Now, for example, what is the door? The door is human beings. The door is what human beings can accomplish. And Cloud Erica was an example of that. He actually opened a gate to the future. Now, how did he do that? Well, he said, I'm going to die. He told Helga, the wife, that he was going to die. And I think he said the same thing to a number of other people, though I don't have the exact dying time and date and so forth that that happened. But the, it's what he represented. Now, this is comparable to Einstein. Very few people understand Einstein. They make up myths about him and explain everything in terms of what this was he suspected of doing. It was nothing of the kind. He's simply a scientist. But he's a scientist who had a reach beyond what other scientists had achieved. He recognized uh, that the development of the mankind that mankind is not based on babies. Not babies as such. 
there has to be something else inserted into a baby in order to make it functional. Otherwise, it's just a thing. It's a squalling brat or something of that nature. And squalling brats are not really, you know, religious things or anything like it. But people go around and say, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm this, and claim certain things. But they don't create anything. They imitate something. They copy something. But they don't create. The object of mankind is not to reproduce human individuals. The process, process of mankind is a higher one. It's the ability to generate and develop children uh, who are geniuses in one degree or another and are therefore their existence becomes something sacred to all mankind even when they're dead when they're dead like he was uh, because that value that judge that judgment that insight to what the nature of mankind is and man man mankind is not babies Mankind is the creation of people, not babies. And if what that is, what that means, it means that the, that the person, the child, for example, acquires in the course of life a recognition. Hey, mommy, stop this crap. Stop doing this crap against me. I'm growing up. I'm not stuck in your category. I don't know where I'm going, but I know I'm going someplace else and it's going to be very important. And I, I plan to take that trip and do it successfully and produce the fruits of that trip. And therefore, instead of looking at what is the popular interpretation of how this thing all works, the point is you have to develop children into making human beings, not just children. And that's where people lose a lot of things in life. Right, because people think the unit of measure unit of measurement of economy is, is money. You know, it's what people generally what think about is as the uh, basis for your economic measurement, dollars, money. But you know what is it really? It's it's really human beings. You know whether it whether you look at that as an individual because that's your source of new discoveries or a family because that's how you reproduce individuals. You know it's really the 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 metric is is human beings themselves. Yeah. Well, sometimes the the, the child is better is better than the show than the parents. Sometimes the, the parent, the mature parents, in, in the process of be, being mature parents, are incapable of producing geniuses. And the point is, is, as Einstein emphasized in, his, in a pra very highly practical way, and a very advanced way, that Einstein understood hu humanity understand what the meaning of the human individual is. Why the individual is important. Not because they were, were uh, you know, the child of a parent. That's not the reason. You can get a bad parent very easily. And it's very difficult to get a good one. Well, then, I've always, oh. I, I've always been struck, Lynn, in the what I see is a just a remarkable convergence between Croft Erica's idea of the extraterrestrial imperative and your work in physical economics defining the necessity of anti-entropic development for mankind. And it seems like that's that was a critical issue of convergence that you and your wife and our movement shared with Croft Erica when he came around us. This recognition that from his perspective space is an imperative because there, we're not an animal species. There's no steady state equilibrium existence for mankind. If you try and maintain that, 
as Kraft Erica himself in his own way clearly defined, trying to maintain any fixed level of existence will necessarily, necessarily lead to the collapse of society. And, you know, this was part of the framework of his extraterrestrial imperative that mankind has to always to change the nature of his, of his existence as a species, progress to new levels, and that necessarily takes us into space at this point. But I think, you know, that is just completely convergent with your work in economics defining the same thing, but from the standpoint of the necessity of anti-entropic growth for an economy. There's no steady state in an economy that works. We have to progress. We have to create. And where does that come from for our unique species? Where does that really come from? It doesn't come from finding resources or digging up resources. It comes from the types of things that Einstein gave to mankind. Yeah, the, problem, the problem is that most people can't do that. Most people who are you know, adults and so forth, leading people and so forth, they can't do that. They're, what they're proud of is their children. Or the hope they, of making a slave of the child, which is also another thing. You can get a puppy to, to be a child of that, of that sort. Some have done, some people have done it. The point is, is that the, the, the existence of a certain kind of person, a certain person, personality, is something which in the process of developing or development, they reach a levels of insight into the future of mankind that the individual generally does not grasp. And it's the discovery of the discovery, which is the characteristic of the individual who is a real scientist, a real leader in, in these terms. Because mankind is not a product of a parent. It meant there are many things apparent about children, but sometimes that's not your child, it's not your children as such. You, you, the children of a good certain side and, and trend actually come gradually to look with pathetic sympathy on the existence of their parents and the family generally. They recognize that their family, who have been produced as young people, the people are, have not come up to the standard of the possibility or access to the standard of the, crea of the creative mind. And that's what the problem is. Our existence is to produce minds which are not practical, but minds which are creative in the true sense. And people who want to be practical have to, have to pay a price. They have to accept the characteristics of stupidity. You know, uh, Einstein spoke of the scientist who's possessed by a sense of universal causation. And he makes the point that the determination and necessity of the future is just as important as the past. And I think that he really inspired this and, and shared this with Kraft Erica because the problem right now is that both of these great geniuses understood that the understanding of the world and the universe in which we live in is not just based on, you know, building blocks of what has already been determined for you, but what you're actually going to create. And this is the the difference in the understanding of we, what we have today in terms of society doesn't have an understanding of their ability to create something new and to create the future in the way that Einstein and Kraft Erika did because they lived in the future and most of society today um, their basis of life, their basis of economics and understanding is you know how can I get by, how can I you know, uh, life just be determined by what I'm going to gain for the here and now. And, you know, that 
is completely differentiated from what the real human identity is. Yeah, sure. That's it's, it's exactly it, but you have to just have to look at it in the right way. The point is that the, the, the parent who is important of this type is one which is, is grows beyond the characteristics of the parent. In other words, the, the child, the young child, or whatever the particular child is, who has that, will always be superior in devotion over what the, the other children and so forth got through education. And what has happened is, as the the, the legacy of, pep, of of that nature of, is is the one thing that makes people slaves, because they believe that they have to form a duty, a recognition, and a duty which is actually functional in that respect, and that's the genius. Einstein was that kind of genius. And there was nobody else like him at that time. There were people who got to that. There were people in earlier periods of your history, of life of historians. Yeah, but with the problem of we have, the problem, the source of the corruption, which takes a whole pop population, of any, almost any population, and, de and degrades it to failure. And the point is, is we produce children who are not failures. How do we do that? Well, you have to have the right parents. That helps. And you have to, you have, to have that kind of insight of a mission orientation, that you are not a person who lives because you have a habit or because you have parents or you have these kinds of things. That's not reality. Reality is the aspiration which drives people to make discoveries in defiance of their parents. Great people always live in defiance of their parents. I know I've lived that. Well, in terms of physical economics, I mean, one way that this has been discussed is that society as a whole must be able to not only just reproduce itself generation on generation on generation, but to be able to engage in what's been called an expanded or an extended reproduction, where you have, in other words, not just a replication of what has been done before, but the creation of something entirely new so that the next generation has higher productive powers of labor, a higher capability of uh, mastery over principle and technology. And I think that was the key with Alexander Hamilton. That was the kernel of the American system of economics. Absolutely. That's exactly true. Completely true. But, but the other aspect of the thing is that uh, what people do today, are, they don't understand this problem, this issue. They don't understand what it means to generate in the, in the person of a living per person being, or to understand what it is to have, have the quality of creativity which is generated suitably for the young and is the carrier of the, gene, of, the, of the achievements of the genius. Those, those distinctions are the important area. I think see, people are getting so stupid and so corrupt, so quickly, so easily, by kissing someone's rear end or kissing a reasonable facsimile thereof. <laughs> and that's what happens. And the point is that you get a, a, a child who gets the spark, and the child who gets the spark will always do creativity 
for a purpose, as a purpose. The, tip, the typical student in, in universities and so forth, they don't know anything. They know what they're told, taught to be told. And the whole society runs around to behave yourself. Now, behaving yourself often becomes the equivalent of a monkey. The point is, children have to grow, grow up and, or be developed in such a way that they are a creative force with unique qualities of that type. And then this comes to the whole thing of Einstein's business. Einstein is not concerned with a baby. He's not concerned with the case of a baby. He's concerned with what is necessary to induce in, the, in a population, the members of the population, to induce a creativity, a kind of creativity, which is immortal. And that's what he did. Because his whole, I mean, he, he was still make, inventing things when he was dead. He was at it. And then what we get is we, we have this long line about raising children because if you're thinking about how to get a, a structure of, a, of the education of a child, and that will kill creativity in any child almost. When the child says, I am not really a slave of my parents or somebody else like that, I'm independent. And fortunately, I've been pretty much an independent person of that nature all the way through my life. It, what, is, what you have to create is not successful people. What you have to create is individual persons who say, no, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to go for the truth. I think that's the significance of people singing in the chorus. Mm -hmm. It is very hard to kiss someone's rear end while you're singing Mozart, for example. And uh, we've seen this process of development of people, I think, who were... Many people in the chorus have expressed that they were surprised that they themselves could be participants in something that was so beautiful. And it's not from because they're singing in the shower or singing by themselves, but they come into something and they realize they can be part of something that they had not imagined before. In a sense, it's, it's part of this education to, to get a population to the point where they could be capable of understanding what's necessary to understand if we're going to survive. Yeah, but the big point is Einstein lived, lived out a form of life an expression of life which is unique to him because he was one of those people who didn't go didn't go along who didn't submit who wasn't influenced by corruption and the rewards are is is people want to get ahead well you want to get ahead the good thing is is a duck report the chalk <laughs> Well, and, I mean, I, Einstein completely changed the nature of how mankind existed in the universe. I mean, he, he, he completely revolutionized what our understanding is of man, the nature of mankind's existence in this universe, how it's organized. And it's those just completely revolutionary changes that, you know, that's the substance of progress for mankind. It's not perpetuation of some tradition. It's revolution. It's shattering old ideas. If you look at the works, write, the writings and so forth of Einstein, you will see a remark in, in done by, by his expressions and is of that nature. 
you it is a the idea of devotion to future to the future of mankind where, where death as such no does not is not a factor now there are people of course in history who've had that kind of devotion they're not depending upon what's going to happen to them as a person they're going to worry about what the effect is of their having been a person I think this is why well, I think this is why Einstein was somewhat concerned that people were creating a bit of a cult of personality around around him he was he was a little bit worried about that because uh, you know the the point is when you have these figures who really I mean everything they're doing is controversial so if people are honest they're not just satisfied with everything that they're getting from these individuals I'm actually finding something kind of similar as we're going out and uh, the idea of what we're doing with Mozart in New York uh, we're finding a funny kind of response from some of the some of the musical layers who on the one hand do not understand this as the sort of intervention I think they will but they don't understand it as the sort of in intervention to address the, the political shortcomings of the American population and at the same time they don't understand who Mozart is and to the point where they even deny that he was revolutionary in any sense of what his role was in the history at that time as if he was just this individual outside history and we have his music and that's what it is but not as a political revolutionary figure but see Einstein is a, diff is a different case he, he lived longer what happened <clears throat> And the Mozart was killed, murdered in his in the evening, murdered. And you know, the, the point is is that what, what I talked about Einstein, what Einstein's qualities were, were of a very special nature. I mean, this is the man who actually explicitly understood the future of mankind. And no one else has ever done that. No one else has recognized that mankind is not a child, is not the product of a child as such. That mankind is a responsibility of a person to live out a function of the future. And it has to be that that particular kind of thing. And Einstein is the one one person who really achieves that, achieves it clearly. Other people, of course, have have had you know, the same kind of things. Many people have a the desire to develop lives in themselves, which are better for mankind, and they will often rebuke themselves in that way by saying, well, I, I can't do that because I've got, to, I've got to look at the higher levels for which I'm responsible. But then you, when you get a child who be, thinks like a true genius, and Einstein it was exactly that, huh? then you're getting a different kind of case. Now what happens is, what, what was the tragedy? is that many parents and parental households and schools destroy the natural creativity of the child. And that, that uh, problem, that effect, lives out to the point of their death. And therefore there's a, their life becomes a failure for that reason. We say, I could, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this. So look at, I've done all these good things. What are you talking about? They'll say that. But that's not the issue. 
And if you look at Einstein, and look what Einstein did in terms of space, Einstein, what did Einstein base himself on? Einstein based himself on, a, on the quality of genius. Hmm? The, the genius is something which grows, which is unstoppable, which does not depend upon being educated. And Einstein, that's what Einstein did. Einstein could, conceived the, the, the intrinsic nature of the solar system, and nobody else ever understood that in that way. That's the difference. In other words, will you, yes, can we, can we create people who make those qualifications? Sure we can. Be the parent of the right child. But then I think, uh, I think the, the question of what you just raised around the education system crushing genius out of children, uh, I, I, I think it could go the other way too. In other words, I think that there, there's often a kind of a, uh, an idea that genius is just simply a, a kind of phenomenon, uh, but that what you, what, and, and that the role of culture is un, little understood in actually being able to promote and develop a, a field of, of activity by which the individuals can, can attain genius. And I think that question of culture goes uh, to what Matt had discussed earlier around this extended reproduction of man, um, and that, that actually becomes the unit of, uh, of what your economy should be, as, as Rachel said, you know, this question of monetarism, that's what oftentimes people think is the unit of value is money, whereas what you've done with your economics, this question of potential relative population density is it's not just how many people you have, but it's it's rather what's the vector of the overall direction of culture and of your ability to think and develop, you know, uh, future creative individuals, future geniuses. And I think, you know, that that also goes to the core of when you when you see that you don't have that. This I assume is part of the. Uh, Forecasting, and I know, Linda, I just just as a point of reflection, this is the 15th of August, which 45 years ago Nixon broke with the Bretton Woods system, which you had actually forecast against all of the other economists that had, you know, discussed the built-in stabilizers of the system, so on and so forth. You had a certain sense of a directionality that you saw the economy going, and I, I think it comes back to this question of culture, this question of, you know, if you don't even have, if you're not even developing a future capability, then you're, you're going to run in off the end of the cliff, so to speak. So, um, anyway, so I think that question of culture actually developing a, the creative individuals. No, it's not that, it's that I, I always, among my, with respect to my parents, I never gave in to my parents. I never did. Because I, I've had a different road, a different direction to go. And all the people who've done that kind of thing have the same answer. Same answer. They may give in to it, give in to the problem, they may, which is for them corruption. I, what I've dealt with is no. No, no corruption. I refuse to accept corruption. And Einstein does it the same way, has done it the same way. There are other people, I mean, great people in, in, in life in the United States and so forth, a few of them. But they, they, they would have a devotion to a mission. Now, it, it's not a mission of trying to say, give a little hand to somebody and hope that they get rich for that reason. The issue is they think they think about the mind of the individual. The mind has to think about what the individual is. The mind has to criticize everything that that, that the individual wants to like. And I've never been like I never have liked. <laughs> 
kind of life I've lived. Never. I've enjoyed fighting the fight, fighting the war, but winning the war. Look at me now. <laughs> I haven't won any wars recently. Not in that sense. But Einstein, Einstein did what he did. He understood the nature of what the future of the in, in the universe was. And you look at the look at the, the final results of his work. He didn't discover something as such. He became something. He became a. a, a it had of saying nothing is true except what the universe represents. Resides on, and that's what he did. He, and he was still doing it. And people who were close to him, when well, he had died, saw that that he he had an absolutely unique characteristic. He was not. He was not. He was self-sacrificing in such. But he wasn't proudly self-sacrificing. He liked his. You know, he liked his violin. Like a few other things like that, <laughs> but no. The, the point, the problem is, there are very few people who are who are not prisoners of their parents, of their parents' opinion, and that's the that is the most dangerous thing that can come upon a human species. <laughs> you have to discover the truth about mankind. And when you understand the truth about mankind, even when you were a child and know that your parents are behaving badly, <laughs> that's that is what the future is. Therefore, and what you're getting is when you're talking about this, you're talking about the, the space, the future of man's space, the, the future of the man of man's space. That's what Einstein did in this final terms. And it's, it's the honest recognition of that, uh, you know, the fact, <clears throat> the fact, of course, that he had was Jewish, <laughs> which is extremely important because of the victimization that he had to deal with. It, it was not just vic the victimization as such; it was his, you know, his desire, desire not to be like that, to be a different kind of person, and he was quite a different kind of person among all of the scientists of his time. So the point is, if you want to create a good society, you have to realize what a good society is and how it works. What you, what you do, what you demand, what you urgently need, constantly, as opposed to what you say, well, I can, I can miss that. Well, the end, you see the greedy person who has an ego, but the ego gets tough and is I'm, I'm tough, I'm a tough thinker. Why is he a tough thinker? Because he's a stinker. <laughs> In one sense or another. Now, the point is, Einstein understood that the babies are not just babies. You, you, very, very human being is a lives to create advanced life and progress of mankind huh, for its own sake, which is what he actually did. Some people try to interpret Einstein. What all I've seen in my experience as such is, apart from a few things I've known, it's not, it's not there. It's an invitation. And this is the inherent nature of a, of a child. That's why they always ask why and ask a million questions. They are testing you. They are considering whether what you say makes sense, you know. So you see that sort of implicit questioning and challenging and looking for, looking for the truth themselves. Um, but you also reference the uh, the attack that we don't have enough people doing this. Why? Well, one is this question of the Bush uh, administration 
the attack on the U.S. political system over the recent recent period. And this this weekend, you discussed, for example, the Clinton coup and the attack on Clinton president Clinton's presidency, which had that effect on the U.S. presidential system, where people stopped speaking up, and that that was the beginning of you know the precursor for 9/11, or you know was it it was that same process. So. Um, now we, we've got to eliminate the Bush factor in, in the U.S. politics. What happened when Franklin Roosevelt was dying, right, uh, there was a change in the United States, in the policy of the United States. And then you had the other thing, which most people have known, Ever since the beginning, ever since Einstein, because you know, Franklin Roosevelt died, you know, the, this the the evening, the evening he, his last discussion with two two friends. One of them was a per personal friend, I then young, which I knew, and which was one of my, my sponsors, and all I did, and and you know, in the economic field. That we, you went, the problem is that people are trying to find a way of, of progress which will enhance their role in life. And uh, Einstein was not like that. And the, in that respect, he's highly significant for what he was. In fact, and then the people who did who did discover, study what he had been working, and they tried to continue what he had achieved what, after he'd been dead. And at that point, a fading away came in. I think that what you know we did the space the space program, the introduction introduction from Germany into the United States and into Clef Cleft Erica's program. This is one of those kinds of things that has this quality of loving genius. That is to love what you do for the sake of loving the loving of what you do and for no other reason. I've had a lot of fun with that, you know, because I've been kicked around a, good, a few times, uh, a few prisons and things like that. But uh, you, you have to give up all these dreams, which are actually fantasies. And therefore, you want to find yourself in yourself something which is beyond yourself. Creativity. We're trying to do it. With, what do we do with music, for example? Take the music work we're doing now. What are we doing that for? We're doing that to create something. And what? What are we trying to create? We're trying to create something greater than was ever created before. And you use mu music, for example, co composition, as a medium for that purpose. Hmm. That's what drives you. That keeps you free from shame. <laughs> yeah. And we, we don't do that. When we have people who have devotion, practical devotion, of all kinds. But it's very tough for them to hold on to, to that uh, devotion. But I, Kraft Erica did it. Uh, Helga, you know, with my wife, and she had a conversation with Kraft Erica because the whole group there knew each other. Huh? And uh, uh, that's the same thing. His, his, what he said to, you know, to, to, to him, to her, to, uh, 
is clear. And there are other people who thought they knew what South Africa had done, and their opinions were not really valid. Even a book was written on on, on South Africa. <laughs> it was written by the wrong author. <clears throat> now, so the point is that we what you have to do is we look at this too from the individual responsibility to the collective responsibility. Its function is to know in oneself the instruments, discover the instruments which are essential for the creation of a higher quality of human behavior. To rise above everything that is popular. To achieve what mankind is, would otherwise never achieve it if they were practical. Practical people tend to be stupid. No, they may no, know all kinds of things, words of this and this and that and so forth, but that's not the issue. If you look at the history of Einstein's life into the time beyond his life, the examination of his life, when the documents and so forth were presented to him by his, his people and followed him, it becomes very clear. But the thing is, society requires leadership, which is not leadership in any bully, you know, bully way. It's a question of saying, what is the purpose of my life, since I know it's not going to continue. And therefore, you would devote yourself to try to create in and of yourself something which you think has a higher mort mortality rate, that is, a good mortality rate. And that's where we, most of our failures in, in the organiza organization, this organization, for example, have run up against that problem. The devotion to the mission, not just a mission, but the mission of the future of the development of mankind without, re without regard to mere life mortality. Well, then, what you, what you called for earlier today was the formation of just that sort of leadership group from within the United States to bring the United States in alignment with what's happening now between Russia and China, what's coming out of Eurasia generally. And I think crafting it around that conception you know, based out of what is happening in New York City, for example, um, we do have the publication of the Hamiltonian, this is the full broadsheet copy that's been hitting the streets in New York City. And um, I think this will continue to provide the, the rallying point for the crafting of that leadership group that you were discussing earlier today. Yeah. Now, that's why I'm concerned about bringing that subject now, here and now, is to affirm that instrument of in intelligence which is necessary to ensure a successful development of the powers of the mind of the individual. Because most people fail to understand the good things when they're presented to them. And to when you have the fun of enjoying the amusement, even the amusement of the fact that you've beaten you've beaten the devil. <laughs> and you have left his imprint on himself. Well, I think that's a good note to conclude our discussion on. Okay. So, 
I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and really thank you, Lynn, so much for taking the time to join us in our discussion here today. It was a real treat and I uh, hope to do it again soon. So that, that passes without problem. Good. So stay well and we'll be looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you very much. I'm well, too. <laughs>